So in that last video, I talked about some of the problems with k-means, and then uh, I introduced this idea of agglomerative clustering. Then I'm going to show how that actually solves these two problems we have of arbitrary cluster shapes and then also hierarchical patterns. So here we have these moon-shaped patterns, and you can see with the k-mean that it's not quite capturing uh, those non-round or non-circular patterns. And so I'm going to try doing this with, um, with agglomerative clustering instead. And let me type that. Let me autocomplete that because it's not a word I can easily spell. And, um, and I'm going to rename this AC. <clears throat> AC here. And, um, and I think that's good. And I'm going to run it. And um, oh, I think, I think I grabbed the wrong data there. Let me just rerun this again quick. And, um, and I see it's not doing a whole lot better. And the reason why is that there's this linkage uh, parameter that we talked about last time. And if I look at the documentation over here, um, it says, well, I have these four options for link linkage, and the default is Ward. And what Ward is doing is it's minimizing the variance within the clusters being merged. And um, so what that means is it doesn't want to really have a cluster that's all spread out like that. It's trying to have, have a smaller, more round cluster to minimize um, the variance. And so just using agglomerative testing doesn't fix the issue I had with k-means. Um, what I may have to do, oh, wrong page. What I may have to do is use a different option. And in particular, if I use a uh, single, then it's okay to have this big cluster where maybe there's just a few points tying it together into this contiguous thing. So I'm going to do that and I say linkage equals singular. And um, did, I, did I misspell that? Oh, it's just single, sorry. Uh, linkage equals sing. I can't type anything. Uh, single. There we go. And now we can actually see that it's neatly dividing into those two clusters as we might expect. <clears throat> okay, so let's head down here and do some hierarchical uh, clustering. And um, the, the challenge here is really going to be about visualization, right? I can't neatly put every point into just one um, cluster. And so what we're going to do is we're going to learn a new visualization um, technique called the dendogram. Uh, it's popular in biology, kind of showing the, the evolution of uh, different um, uh, species. And so I'm going to do it down here with an example of this data, right? I have these kind of two uh, big clusters and they each have some subclusters. And so when I'm going to be doing this, uh, I am going to, let me head up here and grab my code. I am going to run this and and uh, I'm, I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. Before I was using um, n clusters, and what that would do is it would just keep grouping it until um, it has that number of clusters remaining. Um, now what I wanna do is I wanna get um, a, a complete tree, right? Where I have kind of one starting node that is a cluster that contains everything. Um, and it's gonna be a binary tree, so that one big cluster is gonna be divided into two smaller clusters. Each of those might be divided down into two smaller clusters. This will go all the way down until we have clusters that each just contain um, one point. And so the way I'm going to do this is by using not in clusters, but this other option, which is distance threshold. And I'm going to say that distance threshold equals zero. And so that means um, it's still going to prefer to merge together things that are near each other, but it will always merge things together until I end up with just one um, cluster at the end. Let me run that. And um, what is my problem here? Oh, my problem is that there is still a default for n clusters, and I have to disable that. I'm going to do that. And, um, and let me peek at these categories quick. And <clears throat> I see that um, the way I've done this is that every single different point is in its own own cluster, right? So it's going to be a little hard to see what's going on. Um, so to do that, um, I'm going to have to make a dendogram. And I'm going to look over here at the documentation that they provide for this. <clears throat> I can see that this is actually part of um, SciPy clustering, so not part of scikit-learn um, specifically. So I'm going to have to import a dendogram like that. And then, and then what are we doing? Um, there's lots of stuff here that has to do with the labeling of the dendogram. And I'm going to ignore that for now. 
Uh, but what it's doing is it's pulling out the children from the model and the distances from the model. And those are really what it needs uh, to create this picture that I'm going to be introducing called the dendogram. And so, so let me just look at those two things. Let me look at the children uh, and the distances. And um, maybe I'll just leave this like that for now. I'll say ac.children. Okay. And what this is doing is it's, a, it's kind of a new encoding for a binary tree that we haven't seen before. Um, each, each node in the tree is represented by one of these rows. And then these two numbers in there are children of that node, right? So this node has children 185 and, and 347. And, um, and well, this is true for most of the children. You'll notice that all of these have exactly two children. So we're apparently leaving out something. We're leaving out the leaves in our tree. We're only showing the non-leaf non nodes here, right? But I have all of those. And um, every node, whether or not it's a leaf, has, has a number here. And, um, and there's a formula that I'm not going to go to right now, but I could actually figure out, well, 185, maybe either 185 is a point in, in my original data, or it might be another node in this tree that just got made up. Whenever, whenever I merge two data points together, I'm creating a new node for them that's somehow representing those two as a cluster, right? So we have lots more nodes than we had on um, original data points. So I have each of these. And then the other thing I have is I have the ac.distances, right? And these are how far uh, the two children are apart from each other, right? You notice that here, right, I have, uh, you know, this is a child, or I'm sorry, this is a node, and it has children 185 and 347. And how far are those two children from each other? They're this far from each other. Okay, so to create a dendogram, which is going to really visualize this tree of clusters, <clears throat> we have to create a special matrix uh, with four columns. Matrix with four columns. And it's going to be like this. The first column is going to be child one. And uh, the next one column is going to be child two. The third column is going to be the distance between them. Uh, and then the fourth one is going to be the label <coughs> for that node. Um, and, uh, and I'm not going to uh, go into detail here in this video. Um, you can read the documentation more if you want, but that kind of gets tricky for that part. But I'm going to really set up the, these three pieces nicely. And, and I have these, right? This one gives me those first two columns. And uh, the distances give me the other columns. So, so let me take a look at this ac.children. That shape. Okay, so I have um, 499 rows and then two columns. And what was the shape of the other one if I look at ac.distances? Uh, shape. Okay, that one is only one dimensional. And so what I'd really like to do with this one is reshape it. I want this one to be. Uh, having as many rows as necessary in one column. And, and when I do that, I'm like, okay, great. I have, I have 499 rows in each case, two columns here, one column here. I can glue these things together to cover these first three columns. Okay, so let me, let me do that. Let me get rid of this now. And, and the way I'm going to do that is with numpy.horizontal stacking. I do that. And, and to horizontal stacking, I have to pass in a tuple. Okay, let me check out the shape of this thing. Great, so I have my three columns, 499 rows. That's great. And ultimately, I'm not done yet because I may have to put a label there even though I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, but uh, maybe I'll talk, call this um, D for dendogram. Um, what I'm going to have to do is just call this dendogram function that we created like so. And I can pass in D and it's going to complain because I'm not done yet, right? It's going to complain that, well, it, it basically wants to have that um, fourth column, even though it's trying to have a confusing error message. So let me just do that for now. I'm just going to give it a dummy column. And, uh, and so I'm just going to call it labels. Um, I'm just going to put zeros in it for now. I don't care. Um, that's not going to be part of this demo. Um, what, will, what will the shape of this thing be? I know I want 499 rows in one column. Um, but a little bit better if I just say length of ac.children. 
<coughs> that's going to be a little bit more robust. So I'm going to get two columns here for the children, the distance between them, and then my labels on those children. Right, I'm going to do that, and uh, and now I'm I'm concerned because. Uh, it wasn't working, and then it worked the second time, which I never like to see. Um, this is kind of running a very long time. It's spitting out a bunch of stuff because this not only draws a picture, uh, but it returns something. And so maybe actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put none here at the end, and so I can just see my see my picture that it's creating, and it's going to be a mess until we clean it up. Um, okay, so. What, what the problem right now is that it's drawing every single point in this scatter along the x-axis, and that's just too much, right? So there's these features that we can do. We can say truncate mode, and we can pass in how many levels we want it to uh, be truncated to. So I'm going to do that. It runs much faster. And, um, and, and what does this mean? <clears throat> if it's really tall, that means there's a lot of separation between between the two children, right? Um, if it's really short, it means that it's not that meaningful splitting it into two subcategories. And so I can play with this, and I can see that here what's going on is that, um, well, I have two, two main children, and then uh, on one side, I kind of split into two children, and that has some significant height, so those two clusters are fairly different. But splitting those two subclusters into sub subclusters doesn't help much because this is pretty small here. And so this green part over here on this left, uh, what is that? Those are these two guys right here. Um, what does it look like when we have three subclusters in a binary tree? Well, it looks like this. It looks like it looks like well, I have one child, uh, and then. Two grandchildren they're all kind of different from each other so i can kind of see the patterns there and um, if i wanted to do more with these labels down here i could actually show how many are in each of these clusters and uh and it's some ugly code but they have an example of how to do that that's most of what their example is doing is figuring out those counts you can just copy paste if i'm not gonna uh, uh, bother with that with that right now all right so we can see we can uh, by learning how to read this we can see that oh well there's two big clusters which are very distinct and then we can also see that there's three clusters, right? And I could see that in this dendogram, even if I wasn't able to get a scatter plot of the original data. Maybe it's multidimensional or something like that. Um, so it might be hard to see in the original picture, but I could still see that hierarchy here.